saying one nature after the union, you cannot say two natures. Shema Shazaya, can you tell us why the Church of the East cannot accept the Council of Ephesus 431? Now, before you move on, <clears throat> you mentioned a few Cyrils. Yeah. The one in the fifth century who was presiding in the council representing the Pope, is that Cyril of Alexandria? Yes, sir. Because you said he affirmed one nature. That's correct. Cyril of Alexandria did? I thought it was Cyril of Jerusalem. So he affirmed one nature, huh? They, they both do. Wow. Yeah. So Cyril of Alexandria, who's a saint in the Orthodox Church, am I correct? Eastern Orthodox? Right. Correct. Yeah. He There's believed nothing. in one nature? Yeah, absolutely. After the union? Uh-huh. He condemns saying two natures after the union. You can't say it for Cyril. And the Council of Ephesus itself anathematizes saying two natures after the Union. So how is he a saint in the Eastern Orthodox Church? But go ahead. You guys, you guys are baffling me more and more, but go ahead. Uh, so St. Severus, he gives the challenge. He says, show me, show me a church father who says uh, two natures after the Union. Who says it? Show me who. Because there isn't, Sam. There isn't the Chalcedon, the, the Cappadocian fathers, the, the saints, St. Gregory, uh, St. Basil, and the, the Alexandrian fathers, Cyril and Athanasius. Who says two natures after St. Af the Asurai fathers, Mar Apram, Afra? Who says two natures after the union? Nobody says it. So up until we get to the fifth century, the fathers are consistent in articulating one composite nature after the incarnation, huh? Absolutely. Look, notice what the, the Chalcedonians, when they're arguing against Church of the East, which fathers do they use? Do they use their post-schism fathers or pre-schism fathers with, that they have with us? They use our fathers. They use our pre-schism to talk to the church because they can't use their post-schism because their post-schism guys agree. With that them. it comes afterwards. Yeah. So the other day we did a review uh, on, a, on a video reviewing Marmari from an Eastern Orthodox who's criticizing Marmari. And I said, I said, uh, the guy, the guy in the video, he's, he's using St. Severus's argument. St. Severus, who they anathematize, he's a saint for us. He's using St. Severus's argument against the Church of the East. Well, this is our guy. It's not your guy. How are you? And then, ironically, the guy says, so Christ has one nature after the union. The EO guy is saying it. Hmm. Because against the Church of the East, they don't have an argument. So let so the audience can understand, so we don't get confused. And guys, I'm doing I'm learning with you guys. Believe me, this is new stuff for me. The Eastern fathers, especially the Syriac fathers, because we're Syriac, you and I, Aturaya, Ashuraya, we speak Syriac. Yeah. The Eastern fathers, the Syriac fathers, up until the fifth century, spoke of one composite nature after the union, did not speak of two natures. Because someone said, well, there were some Latin fathers. Yeah, but if you notice what he said, he's talking about the Eastern fathers, the Syriac-speaking fathers in the East. So are we understanding this correctly? Absolutely, Sam. And I know Shema Shazaya is going to have a different opinion on this. So that's why I'll bring him in. I yeah. just want to be clear because this is a shock. Because if the Eastern Orthodox affirms the two natures, Chalcedon, and you're telling me St. Cyril of Alexander did not, how is he one of their saints? Because they are... They are mistranslating um, him, misinterpreting him. There's nowhere ever where Cyril says two natures after the union. There's not That's a the big question. Him. Like, like it, it's inconsistent to, to like both accept him and then like deny his teachings about one incarnate nature. Wow. Okay, guys, um, thank you because you're helping me. I'm I'm learning. I have a quote from Mar Ephraim. He says. Mar Apram, for whoever doesn't know, he's one of our. He's the big. He we call him Shimshid Surai. He's the he's the son, the son of this of this. Of the Syrians, Ashurai, sons of Ashur. Yep. Yeah. So he's one. He's our biggest saint of our people, I would say. Um, and the the quote is. He mingled. Listen to this, Sam. He mingled the natures like pigments. And an image came into being, the God Man. This is Mar Apram saying it. Imagine if we said that. I was like, oh, monophysites, monophysites. They're condemned heretics, yeah. Yeah, but Apram says it. Everyone has Apram canonized. Everyone's going to say anything. 
Everybody has them canonized. Everyone canonized them? Yeah. Wow. It's more complicated than I thought. Okay. All right. Good. I'm learning. So if you, you want Shamash to share his view, I'd like to hear it. Because the Assyrian... yeah. Now, yeah. guys, Assyrians actually are in agreement with the Eastern Orthodox and the Catholic when they speak of two natures. Mm -hmm. And yet the Assyrians are still condemned by the Eastern Orthodox. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. I'm sorry, man. Go ahead, man. I Talk to me, Aziza. Yeah, so obviously I'm going to disagree with uh, Dan, uh, Dan, 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 on what he was saying about... Yes, disagree? No! Good. Yeah, about the history leading up and, you know, the quote from Ephraim, obviously, I can give a different uh, interpretation to the quote, but besides the point, to touch on what he said, why we reject Ephesus, it's just as he said it. It's because the Christology that Ephesus brings forth is not the Christology that is consistent with the... Uh, father's prior which would be a one nature christology which we can never accept so cyril has multiple quotes uh, where he says not to speak of two natures after the union that after the union it's one nature from two natures and he has all type and he says that you know the distinction, the distinction uh, is yeah. done away with like into two so those types of statements is where we would disagree with ephesus so a lot of people think that we disagree with Ephesus because of its condemnation of Nestorius. Well, no, because if you look at Saint Baba the Great, he um, he really like respects Leo. He calls Leo a saint because of his Christology. So historically, the Church of the East did accept of Leo, that did accept Leo's Christology, but went against uh, Ephesus Christology because of its one nature formulations. And if you look at the Church of the East fathers historically, like Baba the Great. He always links Cyril with the Oriental Orthodox post schism saints like Severus of Antioch and Philoxenos and all these people. So when you're looking at Church of the East saints, they're never connecting Cyril with Chalcedonians. Right? They, they think that Chalcedonianism and what Cyril had are completely two different faiths. And that's even in the Marganita where he lists yes. the yes. Cyrillians yes. and then the Melkites and then our position. So when you're looking at Ephesus and... Hold on, before you go, yeah. so that people can follow you. You are saying that the Assyrian Church recognizes that prior to Ephesus, there were fathers in the East that affirmed one composite nature. No, I'm saying, I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that in regards to Ephesus, the true successors of Ephesus would be the Oriental Orthodox as we know it today. So the Syriac, the true adherers of the Council of Ephesus would be the Miaphysites because that's what Cyril taught. He says, after the union, there's one nature. Um, and you can't even say two. You no, don't even speak of two. That's what he says. So such statements, we believe, are not consistent with, but obviously we're going to disagree on that point. But what we do agree upon is that Ephesus, in essence, is an anti diophysite council. It goes against diophysitism completely oh, and anathematizes all forms of diophysitism. Wow. So for that reason, it, mm. you see that saints like Babai um, and other poets always link Cyril and Severus together or Cyril and Dioscoros together uh, because we believe that Ephesus is Miaphysite. So that's why we can't accept it because we believe there's two natures. Ephesus teaches right. against that. So that's the reason why we reject bombshell. You guys just throw a bombshell on me. Sorry, guys, if I interject because I'm learning. Okay, Please. now here's the bombshell. You guys hear what he just admitted? Council of Ephesus, which, from what I understand, Catholics and Eastern Orthodox accept. Now, understand what you just heard, and they got it all documented. They're not going to lie because they know they have enemies. They're going to bash them. The Assyrian Church is more consistent in this regard with than the Eastern Orthodox and Roman Catholic, from what I understand. The Assyrian Church will not accept the Council of Ephesus because it affirms one composite nature, which the Eastern Orthodox and the Roman Catholic reject, but they accept the Council of Ephesus. Am I getting this right? Correct, Sam. Yeah, you're 100% correct. Damn, Cyril, you, says, this is Cyril says in his one of his dialogues to not even speak of two. Don't even speak about it. Woo! And so that, so the statements like that, that's why, like I said, saints like Baba the Great would always connect these two uh, traditions together. So we acknowledge that, that the true successors of Ephesus are the Oriental Orth is the Oriental Orthodox Communion, just as they would say that the consistent diaphysites are the Church of the East because we don't have the baggage that comes with accepting Ephesus. Wow. It is beautiful to hear that as much as the Assyrian Church has been bashed by some Eastern Orthodox, 
it turns out they're more consistent with diaphysitism. Do you understand what you're hearing, Ortho Eastern Orthodox? The Assyrian church has been more consistent in affirming the two natures because they rejected a council, the Council of Ephesus, which affirmed the composite nature, which the Eastern Orthodox reject. The Assyrians rejected the council for that reason, and yet they're the ones who are being bashed when they're being more consistent with the view that Christ has two natures after the union. And I also want to say, um, when you read the Our Fathers, and we have like we ha we have disagreements about leading up to uh, Ephesus, like where he quoted Ephraim. I would disagree on what Ephraim says, but this is the you know sim the simple agreement is that we recognize Ephesus as near near. and apart from that, Chalcedon contradicts that. So that would be the positions that we're trying to defend today. Okay. Okay. Wow, something new. Council of Ephesus is rejected because it's a Mia Hussite council. And, so and, then, is, yeah. and if, if, if you want to like see the sources, we have them. Oh, yeah. so, Can you document for those who are going to bash you and say you're lying because you want to document it? Yeah, we have. Like, we this. have a big presentation. Um, if you'd like, I can present it. Yes, I mean, my friend, we're going to do multiple parts. So what I told Subdeacon, we'll try to teach each part within two hours. But you're going to come back if you want to. I want you to come back and finish it. I want you to give a comprehensive case because then I want to come back in February and present a case why he doesn't accept what you have to say. So I want you to make a comprehensive case. Leave no stone unturned. So take your time. We're going to do two hours today. So we got another hour and 15 minutes. Yeah, and then yeah. Lord willing, bring you back for part two. Beautiful. Thank you. Let me let me uh, let me continue in the story a little bit to take. Yes, us they want you to finish the story. Go ahead. Yeah. So, so in four thirty one, after the Council of Ephesus, there was an excommunication. On one side, you have Rome and Ephesus. Uh, sorry, you're Rome and Alexandria. On the other side, you have Antioch and Constantinople, and there was an excommunication for two years between the two sides. And then there was the formula of reunion drawn up by Theodora, set by John of Antioch, yeah. and signed and so by Cyril. In a Miaphysite interpretation, this is the key. That for Cyril to accept the formula of reunion, you have to accept the Council of Ephesus and the 12 anathemas. The 12 anathemas are non-negotiable, equal to the Creed of Nicaea. You can't get away from them. The way the Antiochians accepted uh, the formula of reunion was that the formula of reunion simply replaces the 12 anathemas and the Council of Ephesus, and we don't need to worry about them anymore. So even the reunion was done in a way that was not understanding of each other. And the evidence of this, you have uh, Ibas's letter, the letter of Ibas. Ibas was the bishop of Edessa. So he came from the same school, okay? Now, the, he said, Cyril repented of his 12 anathemas. This is what Ibas says in his letter to the Church of the East, to modern Church, 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 Church of the East. Church. He writes to him, he tells him, Cyril repented of his 12 anathemas. Okay? This letter, by the way, was accepted at the Council of Chalcedon. I'm going to say that a few more times mm. in the show. All right. Now, uh, 448... Let's fast forward a little bit. 448, there's a synod in Constantinople with a guy, a monk, a heretical monk, his name was Eurykes, who didn't know anything. As we say, he didn't know his head from his feet. He didn't know anything. 